Thank you for keeping us company and if you just tuned in, this is Y254 TV Business Tuesday. We are talking about technology and employment. I'm speaking to Sophie Mwale. She's the CEO of Employ. Let's hear what she has for us and what does the situation of COVID-19 have on youth and employment. Good evening. Good evening. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. You know, you know, it, it, uh, for a very long time there has been a problem with the youth and employment and almost everyone has, come up, has tried to come up with a solution for the youth. Our politicians have done it, our parents have done it, friends have done it, but it seems uh, we never get to solve our problem. And right now we are speaking of COVID-19, people are back home, some of them have been laid off without any payment, as others have undergone pay cuts. and. We are struggling as a nation, we are struggling uh, globally and what would you say the situation will bring the best in terms of uh, job market? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, I think uh, what we're experiencing is something that was already predicted to have, to, to will come to pass, mm -hmm. uh, only that uh, we were associating the changes or the disruption in the labor market maybe to technology and increased adoption of uh, new technologies like artificial intelligence. <laughs> but uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, event is what people in our space are calling uh, the accelerant to the future of work. Mm -hmm. So what we are seeing right now is a situation where people have been laid off, yes. Uh, they don't know where else they can add value or how they can reintegrate back to the workforce. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that's one of the solutions that the employer are trying to tackle. Uh, technology has been there for a while now and uh, people have begun working from home. It has been proven it is possible to work from home. What w does this mean to uh, prospective employers who are coming up with, with their businesses or the existing businesses or the enterprise that they hold? Because their people or their employees have, have proved we can work from home and deliver. How about redundancy? Do we move now from offices to technology completely? Ah, uh, it's still a bit too early to have this entire conversation in its fullness. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we are seeing a lot of organizations that are actually fully embracing the work from home dogma. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we've seen Google and also Africa's own Andela, who mm -hmm. say they're going fully remote fast and they're relinquishing all their office spaces. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think for now, employers are just still trying to figure out what to do with their workforce, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, there are some who've let people go work from home, but then they had to recall them. Mm -hmm. Some who've le let people go off in um, either workforce restructuring and all that, but then they're realizing they have manpower gaps again, mm -hmm. and they're out there looking for people to come back and work for them. So it's still a bit too early to have this conversation, mm -hmm. but I think what I would say is um, it's a critical time for employers. Mm -hmm. They have to reevaluate their workforce and look at traditional roles and see whether d there are so many roles they have to figure out whether they really needed to have in the, in the first place. Were there other people who could fill in those roles? Mm -hmm. Are there roles that they could have worked with part-time staff or are there roles that their staff could have worked from home to reduce on total overhead? So I think that's the conversation we'll be having between maybe the next couple of months. All right. Now, speaking of uh, COVID-19, there are these people now. Uh, I think it's a worry now. Uh, people are saying, I have learned a lesson. Having one job from my employer, which would say it's a white collar job, they want to have a side hustle. And mostly this is what will happen to majority of the people. They will move to this uh, particular space. What will happen if uh, everyone moves to the side houses? Now, how do you balance between the employer and your side hustle and not uh, maybe fl frustrating your career maybe? I think that's okay. That's, that's, that's an interesting feature we'll observe. Eh? So what we see in other countries, people hold more than one job in developed nations, right? Mm -hmm. But here we are more used to the eight to five kind of dynamic, okay? Mm -hmm. But then life is also pushing us out there to try to think of alternative ways to make extra income. The only thing mm -hmm. is if you want to get an extra job, you have to be really good mm -hmm. within whatever it is that you are doing. Uh, mm -hmm. Find extra time, whatever it is that you have to figure out how you're going to balance them. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want, as you are chasing the next thing, to compromise what you already have and it's already stable enough. True. Yes. Now, uh, someone who has been laid over such a time, someone who has a career, someone who has been doing well, but uh, they have been uh, maybe laid off because of COVID-19, the employer is saying we can't pay enough. 
how do you pick yourself from the dust moving forward? Hmm. Okay, so that's a conversation that I was also just having yesterday. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, we have people who've been laid off. We have two bands of professionals that ourselves we've looked at. We have entry-level professionals. Mm -hmm. So maybe someone with less than two years of experience in the marketplace, uh, they're still young, they're still malleable, they're, they still can appro uh, uh, apply their, sk their skills cross-functionally. Mm -hmm. uh, the bigger challenge lies with people who've been... Uh, in their space for five years or more you know mid-level professionals to senior executives mm -hmm. so you know yourself either as a news anchor or as a reporter or something so what can you do now that you've been laid off so these are the people we are advising they need to find ways to actually reassess their own skills you know mm -hmm. find skills that they can apply across functions and find how they they can try to offer value across functions mm -hmm. so there's a lot of career introspection that uh, professionals have to go through mm -hmm. they may need to work with career coaches but definitely that process has to happen before now they move forward mm -hmm. the other thing i was looking at or we were looking at there's a research that we were doing over the last couple of weeks and the findings were out by last week mm -hmm. uh, we were seeing that um, there's a lot of uh, potential for part-time work okay so these professionals who've been having very steady jobs mm -hmm. they're now out there in the market it's taking a lot of time for them to get absorbed by the next employer. Is there a possibility for them to look for other employers with mm -hmm. lesser budget who will be willing to accommodate them, maybe for lesser hours? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm. All right. And uh, now uh, this brings me to the uh, question on training and pitching for job market. We have people who feel, I can do this, I can do that. But they end up training on one course, but when it comes to uh, job market, they don't fit. Not because they can't do it, but because of their training. How now do you advise, especially the young people, on choosing their career, career path? Okay. Uh, I, I think for our environment or for our, our market for the longest time, our market has been very linear in terms of how it matches capability to positions. Okay. So if you studied, um, what do I use? engineering but you feel like you're more artistic it's very hard for you to convince someone out here that well you can handle another job that's not that's non-engineering uh I, I was i find it interesting uh, because we deal with a lot of professionals and you will learn by a professional maybe from the u.s uh they were maybe a teacher or a nurse and now they're a software developer okay so how really does that happen so for for us what we feel like in this industry what we need more is more diverse tools for assessing capability uh, and I think it's that reason that we build artificial intelligence into our assessment engine <laughs> where we are looking at a professional not just from the education and experience perspective <laughs> we are looking at them very whole rounded in an in an all rounded manner <laughs> so we are looking at their interest their temperament their personality their aptitude uh, we're looking at uh, feedback we are getting from referees, their friends, and just conglomerating all this together to come up with an overall view of this person's capability. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, I, I know there are people who get confused on what career path they want to chart in their lives, mm -hmm. especially when someone, maybe the high school, as they, someone is from three, from two, they are like, mm -hmm. I want to be so-and-so, I want to be like so-and-so. Mm -hmm. But choosing that career, knowing I am good in this, but the job market offers this. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you advise these people, especially them that are confused in coming up with an idea of what they can do uh, by their skills and their talents vis-a-vis uh, -vis what the, uh, the job market has? Okay. So that's where career uh, professionals come in, expert career coaches come in. Mm -hmm. uh, they are able to assess someone and they can pick out the salient personal qualities of this person mm -hmm. and advise them on the best career line to pursue. The only challenge with that is that uh, it's, 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 it's not scalable. It cannot address a lot of people at the same time. You know, the number of graduates we have or the number of high school kids we have as way too many for a few career professionals to tackle. So I think the best way forward for this market, I know we have a number of other digital tools that are also coming up, just like employee, but the best way to scale this kind of personality assessment and mapping that to careers can only be done effectively through technology. Exactly. Now brings me to the point, the employee. There are so many platforms where someone applies for a job. You've seen maybe a, a vacancy for engineer or a doctor or this uh, field. But then 
you just only upload your CV and other things. What does employ offer? What other extra thing that would make me, if I'm looking for a job, employ will place me where I need to be? So there are two things that employ is doing. Most career platforms in this market, they are uh, job requirement centered. Mm -hmm. So they are measuring somebody's cap capabilities against a, a job that's already there. There, there are very few. Pla there are, there's actually no platform other than employee that measures your own capabilities against your own future potential. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where the beauty is. The the reason for that is that most platforms here are paid by by the employer to advertise. So the job seeker is never really a customer. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, employee brings in a twist into that dynamic. The job seeker isn't just a product. He really is a customer also in this question. Um, the other thing that employee does is that uh, we've actually created a very large network of career professionals, all of them accessible through the website. Mm -hmm. So beyond the normal technological tools that we pro provide you, eh, we also provide you with access to career professionals now to have a more personalized uh, approach. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, and now uh, after maybe I have tried my best to go through your platform, I have not been successful. but. Internally, I feel I'm a business person. I'm an entrepreneur. How now do I get, where do I get some training if not school? How do I move uh, from independence of the employment to becoming my own employer? How do I manage my business? How do I have my good record keeping? Okay. Um, that is broad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a broad question, but I'll try. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, one thing we understand about a job seeker is that they are always a job seeker, but then part of them also looks out for entrepreneurship opportunities out there. Exactly. So all our pro all our advisory services, all our blogs and webinar series, we also really try to tackle part of entrepreneurship as a subject. But the challenges of getting into entrepreneurship, maneuvering, understanding uh, your clients, their needs, how to build a product, they are really quite broad. Um, I think we'll have to figure out maybe if if we realize that it's a, such a thorough need among our base, we'll have to figure out maybe if we can offer better services in terms of entrepreneurship support. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So if, you know, if someone wants to reach out for maybe more training, and I'm sure in your, in your uh, career path you train young people, how do, uh, does one find you? Okay, so someone can get me by through our website, obviously, it's www.employee.co. Mm -hmm. That is employee is E-M-P-L-O-I mm -hmm. dot C-O or www.employee.co.ke. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody can also send me a personal email at sophie at employee.co. I'm always willing to help. All right. I, I, I was trying to, uh, to, find, uh, to find your profile in my um, gadget here. I, so you have quite a profile, and uh, that's so excellent. We have Cindy Otambo Mapeni watching from Roiro. Uh, thank you so much for watching and back home. Thank you so much for keeping us company. I trust you have learned something. And thank you, uh, Sophie, as well for coming. And I'm sure our audience have learned something this very day. We had a few minutes, but we have made the best <laughs> we could. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> It Thank couldn't have gotten any better without you. Uh, my name is Dereva Hillary. She has been my guest, Sufi Mwale, CEO of the Employee. Maybe you could visit the website and see what they have to offer. And maybe you could learn one or two things. Have yourself a very good night and a blessed a few days of the week remaining. Keep safe.